Welcome to the No Podcast with me, Nikki Spo. What is up, my friends? Welcome to another episode of the No with me, Nikki Spo. I am so glad you're here today. We have got a fun one. Well, first of all, I am recording from Zion, and that is in Utah, my friends. And you may have seen on my IG that I have been living my best life out here with my girl Jamie Lee. Listen, it's one of the first times I've left my kiddos. Okay, maybe the first time. Apparently, they are living their best lives with Grandpa Bucky. That's my dad. And Mama got a break. And let me tell you something. It's a three-day break, and it has fed my soul. If you are a mama, I want to encourage you to take time for yourself, even if it's five minutes today hiding from your children in your closet. Anyway, Jamie Lee Ruiz is an intuitive life coach and professional dancer. She has toured the world and danced for A-list artists. Being on a healing and personal development journey for most of her adult life has allowed her the gifts and skills to become an intuitive life coach and help others on their own journey. When she is not meditating and being her spiritual and witchy self, like me, she is on stage somewhere around the world shaking her ass, that ass. (laughs) She's all about balance. Jamie's great joy in life is connecting women to their divinity through self-love, mindset, and manifestation. She's also been one of my closest friends for like IDK, 17 years. Let's get ready to rumble! been a long time we've seen each other through a lot of stuff through a whole lot of stuff oh my gosh like so many things. we've been like millions of different versions of ourselves since then a million mm-hmm. but time out like i don't know if a lot of people know this but jamie introduced me to spo um jamie and sharina bustamante introduced me to eric <laughs> and let me just you know why because we were both weird do you remember mm-hmm. that no absolutely we were like we think you should meet spo we think you'll like him because like he's weird and you're weird and you guys could just like be weird together Since when have i been weird maybe it was always yeah it's it's like you're weird and his weird are different you're weird he's just weird weird and you're like <laughs> you're like arts artsy weird you know what i mean that. you're I like a, an artsy fartsy girl i'm an artsy fartsy girl i mm-hmm. like it so we've been professional dancers together soul sisters we've been party girls yeah, oh yes we have we've been thirsty girls at times too <laughs> shit mm, all all the kinds of girls we've all been all kinds we've been hot girls miami girls la girls hustling girls we're still hot girls we're still hot girls okay um curious girls funny girls adventurous girls good mm-hmm. time girls mm-hmm. and here we are today stepping into our own respective spaces of spaces of authentic power one thousand percent we are peaceful girls these days mm. we are peaceful women women at peace yeah mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> And it's been awesome to be on this journey like together and like through all of these stages. And so during the pandemic, you made a big career shift, like a big career shift. Huge. Yes. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember you were in the Keys and I was here and we we're all like whatever, like hanging out in our backyards hot as <laughs> in Miami, like South Florida. Um, but it probably feels like a long time ago for you um, because like running your own business is a lot of work, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so it's probably like yesterday, but also like a really long time ago, like lifetimes ago in a bit, right? Mm-hmm. It feels like both. It feels like ye- literally yesterday, but it also feels like a lifetime ago, like I was a whole other person. A whole other person. So what exactly do you do now? I mean, I do a couple things now. I'm still a professional dancer like I've always been, but I also am an intuitive life coach. Mm. Mm-hmm. So what exactly is that? Um, well, I'm a life coach. I help people become the best versions of themselves. I lead them through a transformative experience to become their best and highest self. But I also call myself intuitive because I am an intuitive. I um, can read energy. I can, I move like and make decisions based off of my intuition. I receive messages and signs from my spirit team and my I love that spirit team. I want yep, a spirit team. You have, have one. one. You have, have one. one. Everyone have has one. one. You just got to tap in and I'm tapped in so I'm intuitive. I need somebody to break down this intuitive part mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. let me tell you something. I have ignored my intuition for mm. so many years, mm-hmm. right? It's just now, like recently, that I've started to pay attention to my intuition. And so being able to like do that for myself is like hard stuff. Many people are disconnected from their intuition. Um, and it's uh, like society keeps you disconnected from yourself, mm. like just the world in general and like things you've experienced. And I think like what I pride myself on is bringing people back to themselves. Like, oh. and I think intuition is just literally connecting to yourself, to your inner self, to your the, the spirit, spiritual version of yourself that exists when you're gone, that existed before you came here. Yeah. Like that version of yourself, I think is your intuition. How did you arrive in this space then? Mm. 
I've just been on a healing and spiritual journey for many, many years. And one thing kind of just leads to another. Like I started off just like searching for something to connect to, found meditation. Meditation led to spirituality. Spirituality spirituality led to, you know, like hiring a life coach, hiring a life coach. So you hired a life coach for yourself. I hired a life coach. I love that. I did. Um, I hired a life coach, which was like really the thing that showed me that I could be a life coach. Mm. Number one, I she took me through a, a transformative experience. I became my best and highest self after working with her. And also, she, like, without her knowing and, like, not doing it on purpose, she kind of showed me the ropes of, like, what a life coach does and, yeah. and how they do what they do. And I just loved it so much and was like, I can do this. So at, one point, at what point did you say, like, I'm going to do this? I'll tell you. (laughs) (laughs) So I knew that for a long time I wanted to help people some way, somehow, only because I had been helping myself heal from so many things for so many years. I'm like, this is cool. Like, I I got something going on here. I've healed myself of so many things. I want to help people do the same. I don't know what that looks like. Right. But at some point after dance, I will do that. I will step into that. Then the pandemic happened and I was just sitting with myself with nothing to do. And like I looked at myself one day and I was like, baby girl, after dance is right now. Wow. (laughs) And that was I had already had a life coach at that time and I I still had one. And I was like, I think this is my moment. Like, Mm. I got to do this. I, I don't have dance. I don't have anything else. Right. After dance is now and after dance is now is now. Right. You're like, after I do this, like there's never going to be a right time. Right. Mm -hmm. I like to call it divine timing. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't know when it's going to happen. You can't like really predict these things, but there's like a divine timing for everything. And like that was the divine timing for me to become a life coach. I love that. It was like your moment is now. Yeah. So I I know that you know my personal divine timing of Mm -hmm. like how I stepped into my own personal power. And it's just like it's undeniable that divine timing exists because you could be hearing one message forever, right? You have to be willing and open to hearing it, right? Mm-hmm. For to put it into action. Yeah. Like and that is the whole divine timing part of it. Now, are you open to sharing some of the things that you healed from? Absolutely. Um I have healed myself of anxiety, mm-hmm. depression. I have anxiety. <laughs> yeah, I mean I think the majority of humans of do. do. Yeah. I mean, not to say that I don't have anxiety anymore, but yeah. like I had like crippling anxiety and I have like anxious moments now that mm-hmm. I, I know how to work through and, yeah. and get myself past. So that's why I say healed myself of anxiety, but anxiety, depression, many, many, many insecurities, unworthiness. Oh. Um, how would that impact your life though? Like that sense of unworthiness, like what were the, like the telltale, telltale signs of that? Like, where were you lacking? Mm. You know what? I didn't even know, but I I almost like hit a wall of like my healing. You know, it was like I did all the surface level healing I could do. And then when the pandemic happened, I had zero distractions. I wasn't traveling the world. Yeah. I, I didn't have dance. I didn't have friends. I didn't have bars. I didn't have fake lashes and extensions. <laughs> yeah. And my roots were down to my ears. Like I didn't <laughs> have all the things to distract me from myself. And Ooh. I Ooh. was just literally forced to <laughs> sit with myself. I feel that. So the only thing that could take place in that moment was for all of my, can I curse? Yeah. All of my shit You've been cursing. that I've been <laughs> <laughs> avoiding and like was in the unconscious to, to sur- surface. Mm-hmm. And like I had to feel it. I had to look at it. I had to deal with it. And th- that was like pandemic was the moment where I was like, oh, my God, I am so insecure. I feel so not good enough. I was just really just like forced to sit, to sit with all the things, which ultimately showed me like that was my big aha moment where I realized, oh, my God, this is lack of self-love. Oh, oh, my God, I have not been loving myself. I didn't even know that I wasn't. I didn't even know that it was a thing or how to do it. Like it was just like, it all just like, it all just hit me like a ton of bricks. Well, on some level, like I think we were all aware of this concept of self love, right? Because like social media has been like putting it in our face for a bit, but like, I think there's um, a definite moment where it clicks for, for us in a different, deeper way. Yeah, absolutely. I think like my idea or perception of self love up until that point was more so self care. 
Okay. Right? And I think that there's So what's like, the difference? Oh my God. For people who would like don't know the difference, like what's the difference? Huge difference. And I learned it in that moment was mm-hmm. like self-care is like, or, or at least what I thought self-care was, was like take care of yourself, like treat yourself and like get your nails done, have a spa day, like, right? Self-love is have a relationship with yourself, right? So think about ways that you love other people Mm. unconditionally and like support them, love them, words of affirmation them, um, want to make them feel better when they are down, Um, like spend time with them, like all the like real deep ways like you have a relationship with them and like you show them so much love like that self-love you almost have to like I had to so during the pandemic I I put myself through what I call self-love boot camp I was like I'm gonna figure this out I'm gonna learn how to love myself and I almost like split myself to to Jamie's and I was like Jamie you're gonna learn how to love Jamie and Jamie you're gonna learn how to love Jamie so like (laughs) I like that what do you need okay I'm gonna give that to you what do you seek from other people see yourself outside of yourself yeah like whatever it was that I knew like the ways that I knew that I gave love to other people I was like cool I'm gonna start doing that for myself and also the things that I seeked from other people I was like cool I'm gonna start doing that for myself so it was like I was like self-sourcing love instead of like giving it away or like needing exactly looking for someone else to love yeah do you feel like you've always been spiritually connected or is this something that you recently developed no, I don't think I've always been spiritually connected. I used to be really religious. Yeah. I, like I grew up since I was three years old going to a private school. Yeah. And I remember like I had a relationship with like Jesus <laughs> and God. And like that's what I knew and what I believed. Um, and then when my dad passed away almost nine years ago, I like everything that I had known and believed in and felt as far as like my connection to God Mm -hmm. like I didn't feel it anymore okay and I was like so confused and wanting to connect to something because I'm like okay these are aren't these the moments where like God is supposed to show up and you're supposed to feel him the most totally well I don't so I need answers and that is where my journey started and where I just like went down the rabbit hole of spirituality and now I would would not consider myself religious I would consider myself spiritual AF how does your spirit sense of spirituality now, the way it is today, mm-hmm. impact the work that you do? Mm. Um, it's it's everything. L- literally everything that I do is like based off of spirituality. Like I think that as humans and living in this human world, we forget that we're spirits mm-hmm. first and foremost and ultimately and always and forever before we came here into this human body we were a spirit when we leave this human body we will continue to be that same spirit and all of the spirits that we are are all connected to each other and connected to a higher power and like it's literally everything and um so the work that I do is like I try to remind people of that and I try to connect people like I said, back to that version of themselves, like yeah. the inner version, the, the spirit version of themselves that will forever live beyond this human lifetime. Okay. So let's talk more about energetic matches then. Mm. Cause I know you love to talk <laughs> about energetic matches. Um, when you're coaching your clients, how do you guide them into identifying what is or is not an energetic match? Mm. Cause I bet you also do it for yourself too. Yeah. You know what? I think I approach it, I don't approach it from that angle of like what is or is not an energetic match. Mm -hmm. I approach it from like what is it that you want, Mm. right? Like what is it that you want that you're trying to attract, that you're trying to be, that you're trying to achieve, right? And like imagine like what frequency that thing vibrates at or that experience or that person or that whatever it is, right? And so everything that you do think feel believe needs to be an energetic match for that yeah right so it's like not necessarily being like that is or isn't an energetic match it's like having tunnel vision on what it is that you want where you're trying to go and making sure that every action every thought every thing you say and do is like energetically matching that thing and taking you in the direction of it give me an example i want to be a millionaire Yeah. Okay. Right. I want to be a millionaire one day. Okay. Right. If I am making broke ass decisions, if I am going to eat dinner and I'm like, I really want this expensive steak, but I'm not going to get it because I don't want to spend that much money. So I'm going to get like the 
boring chicken fingers, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing against chicken fingers. I love me some chicken fingers. But (laughs) if like I genuinely want the steak, but I'm going to choose the chicken fingers just to save money, like I am not being an energetic match for the millionaire that I'm trying to be. Mm -hmm. Because a millionaire is not going to not do what they want or get the thing that they want, the luxurious thing that they want just to save a couple a couple bucks. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. So how do we balance that between like that and responsibility so we don't actually go broke then? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a balance of like, um, like embodying the version of yourself that you want to be with, like you said, like responsibility and like honor. Yeah. So like, specifically then I guess with like money right Right. it's like I want to I want to I want to be a millionaire so I want to like live luxuriously and I want to like think and like and act like I'm a millionaire but also have to like honor money and I'm not going to just like Mm. like waste it or um not treat it well or Uh, not care about it you know I have to I I also have to think about the amount of money that I currently have in my bank account right I'm not gonna go and like if I have three thousand dollars in my bank account I'm not gonna go buy a five thousand dollar purse that's not honoring money that's like and that's not living like being careless exactly exactly A, a millionaire is not gonna go I'm gonna go spend all of my money and then some today yeah you know what I'm saying yeah totally yeah can't be careless either. No, okay. There's a, but there's, there's a balance. One thing that you said that really stood out to me was like having the attitude of a millionaire, right? Like, so even like when it comes down to how you enjoy experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the embodiment, right? That's what we were talking about. We were yeah. talking about embodiment. Embodiment. So like, okay, I am a life coach, right? Let's say my goal is to make $50,000. Let's just say, I'm just giving you a random number. My goal as a life coach is to make $50,000 a month in my business, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say I'm like driving to the gym, right? On most drives, I catch myself like worried about, you know, like where my next check is going to come from or um, random things I have to do or whatever. And then in that moment, sometimes in random moments, I'll catch myself and I'll be like, stop, enjoy this drive as if you were already the coach that makes $50,000 a month. If you were that coach right now, how would you be driving? Instantly, my mood completely changes. My, my body posture changes, my thoughts change, my energy changes. And I start to enjoy my drive because if I actually was making $50,000 a month, I would be thoroughly enjoying this drive like not have worries I wouldn't have many worries right exactly and so I try to in all moments even like having dinner with you Mm -hmm. I was like I'm gonna eat this dinner as if I was a millionaire right now how would I be enjoying it how would I be talking to you what would I be thinking like it just embodying it in all moments I love that yeah my thing is like I want to be whole (laughs) so I'm like how would I behave if I was totally whole right now and just even since you told me that yesterday, I'm like, I've shifted mm-hmm. in 24 hours. I've shifted. Mm, you know I what love I mean? That. And that's not to say that I'm like incomplete right now. I think that I have been on a journey to becoming more and more whole. Right. But that's like my, my goal is like, I want to feel whole and at peace. Okay. So if I, it's like, act how you want to feel. Right. Yep. Like I want to feel whole. How do I act that way mm-hmm. so that I can feed that so I can create that so I can make that my reality. So you can manifest it and, yeah. and be an energetic match for it. But can I say something really quick? Tell me. You are whole. Every hu- whole. Everyone is whole. Everyone is whole and complete. There's no one that isn't. It's just like how you feel and what you believe about yourself is the only thing that keeps you from knowing that you're whole. But you're whole already. There's nothing that you can or can't do to be more whole. I love it when people like indirectly or unintentionally say something about knowing because that's what this whole show is about, right? It's about, it's the know. And it isn't, I've said it so many times. It's not about like being a know-it-all or what I know. And I know more than you do. It's Mm -hmm. not that at all. It's like coming to this place of knowing, Mm -hmm. like just knowing Mm -hmm. the within. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It makes me, it makes me so like, it gets me hot gets me hot so <laughs> many 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 years ago you and i were doing some crazy ass workout at a park remember? <laughs> <laughs> with our trainer and we were caught up in this mindset of like we can't do it mm-hmm. you remember like i think he had us run something like s- stupid like two laps 
Well, then. also it in was like heat. It was a, very hot. A, a bajillion degrees in Miami, it was, Florida. It was fine. So those two laps were very hard, but we were caught up in this. Like I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> we were like huffing and puffing, yeah. and we we're running next to each other, literally. Like I can't do this. Are we gonna stop? Are we gonna stop? But to be fair, I really couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I could not do it. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> anyway, he sat us down and he talked to us about like the power of our minds, and it was like one of the first time anybody mm-hmm. had ever had a conversation like that with me. And so then we proceeded, probably that very night, mm-hmm. to either read or watch. The secret. Yep. Yep. Um, and that was like a real eye opener for us. So can you further break down the power of our minds and manifestation? Yes. Honestly, that was a very pivotal moment in my life. Right? That oh my is, God, we were together. Yes, we were. Out. Yes. That was like my introduction to manifestation. And now like that's literally all I do. Um, yeah. Power of, your, of our minds. Like we are literally so powerful. Um we just like forget it sometimes or we don't even know it. But yeah. um, here's the thing is like we grow up however we do, right? With yeah. whatever influences we have in our lives, whether it be parents or teachers or friends, relationships, whatever that is. And you you start to create like stories in your or narratives, narratives in your head totally. about how things go, about how life is, about anything. Right? Oh my gosh, yeah, I can I can imagine it right We now. all have these stories and these narratives that play in our head based off what we've experienced, right? Yeah. But those stories and those narratives are not ultimately true. They're just how we've perceived life of it up until this point. Or have been taught. Yeah, right? like we've learned it, we've ad- adopted it from other people or experienced it. And so like this is our, what we believe to be true. Right. Right? And so what I know about the power of our minds is that like we get to call bullshit on those stories. <sighs> Yes. And we get to choose mm. our story, whatever we want it to be. It can lit- If you want to believe in unicorns, like, and you want that to be your ultimate truth, that can be your ultimate truth, right? So, but we're just so wrapped up in these stories that, like, say that things are hard or things are oh not gosh. possible or things don't get to happen for me or I am not worthy or whatever it may be. And, like, you, I just want literally everyone in this world to know that, like, that might have been your reality up until this point. Mm-hmm. Those might have been the cards that you had been dealt up until this point. But right now you have the power and you get to choose any story for yourself, a new story. In your brain, I want you to – or physically do it. I don't give a shit what you do. But – Raise your hand if you have heard the narrative, life is hard. Because mm. I'm because we're raising our hands right now. No, how many times in my life, like a mentor has told me life is hard? Oh. Like, right? I and hear like, it every day. Every day. Every day. And okay, like, and here's the thing, like, that can be true. Like, life is hard. It's not easy. Like, shit's not easy. Like, life is hard and, right? And I can still live the life of my dreams, even if it's hard. And it's okay for it to be hard. Yes. As long as we're not living in that space forever. And I agree with everything you're saying, but I just want to add something. Add something. Okay. The same way though, you can entertain the thought of life is hard. Mm-hmm. What if you entertained oh, the complete opposite that says like life, life is easy. not even, not even like life gets better and better. Oh. Life is up and up. Life gets to be so good for me. The amount of times that you said, thought or felt life is hard what if you more times than that said thought and felt life gets to get better and better for me life gets to be up and up life gets to be and feel so good i love that because life does get to feel good one thousand percent and like i have decided that my story is life life is good life is so good life gets better and better and like that is my experience now Not to say there are not difficult moments, right? Totally. But overall, I'm not sitting here feeling like life is hard anymore. I'm feeling like life, my default feeling and thought is that life is good and life gets better and better. Okay. So that brings me like to the stories that we tell ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And the stories that we let other people tell us about ourselves, Mm. right? Like Mm -hmm. for people who've been in like really messed up relationships and where there was a lot of trauma or mistreatment. Like we can believe the stories that we're told about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And like that sense of worthiness comes from that a lot of the times, right? Like Mm -hmm. we're not deserving of love because we maybe had a parent who was incapable of providing us with love or whatever it is. And so something that I know that, I mean, I obviously I know that you know this story about me and I want to share it now and I've never actually like really talked about it, but um, 
Like, are, do you remember when like Spo and I came out like as a couple? Mm-hmm. Okay, in like 2012. Well, back in the day, like I had been like I don't know when I was like 22, I was arrested for DUI. Mm-hmm. Right, like that was something that I had a lot of shame about. Right, mm-hmm. and um, when Eric and I came out. <laughs> some asshole <laughs> published an article with my mugshot mm. saying like look at this sea urchin i think the word sea urchin, <laughs> no, not sea sea urchin. urchin. <laughs> yeah sea urchin the term sea urchin was actually used and so look at the sea urchin that coach Spo is dating wow and i felt so much shame like that was a, a something that i went through because obviously now today i'm sober and i know that i had a, a legitimate and have i have a drinking problem i am mm-hmm. an alcoholic and i cannot drink alcohol like Mm -hmm. i wish i could see my like man youth is wasted on the the young right like and wisdom man some i wish i had the wisdom then that i do now to actually see i'm like okay well that makes sense (laughs) that i did that and i made a mistake like that and so it's something that i still to this day deeply regret you know but i do remember vividly like having that story come out about me and really believing it believing like that what other people thought of it. And it was such a shameful experience for me that like I started to believe that and I started to live in a space where like You I, thought you were a sea urchin? <laughs> 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 but I'm I kidding. thought that I was like disgusting. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I get like emotional thinking about it right now because I let that shit like run my life. And I think about like real celebrities, you know, or like people who get people who get bullied and all the shit they tell that like they believe the stories that other people say about them. And so part of this whole evolution for myself, and you've been a huge part of this, Jamie is like, like not letting other people create the narrative for me. Mm. Like I'm going to create the motherfucking narrative for myself. Mm -hmm. And, and I say this all the time, like when the feelings are the same, like our experiences are different, but the feelings are the same. And like, I can only imagine how many people out there that are possibly listening to this podcast thinking like I've been telling myself this bullshit story about my life and it has eaten my soul up yeah and so part of like the work that you're doing is helping to break people's stories that they tell themselves so that they can move on to that up and up right so that life continues to get better so that they don't have to continue to tell themselves the stories about what a sea urchin whatever the fuck they were (laughs) you know yeah like or how disgusting they felt about themselves and like I know I feel that way. Like I have a weird relationship with food, right? Like what stories do I tell myself about food? Mm -hmm. I was telling myself really messed up stories about alcohol for years. Yeah. And so part of your, like this idea that we can break those chains seems like a huge part of your work. 1000%. I just had to like, I call it reprogramming my brain. Yeah. Really. Like I had to unlearn so many stories and then relearn new ones. Mm. It's hard. That is hard work. That is and hard that's work. why if I can get a coach, like I'd want to have a coach. Yeah. That's... Right? If you want to have somebody guide you through it, like you don't have to do it alone. That's where you come in. I think that everyone deserves support. Mm-hmm. And I think that my purpose and my job is to support people. And I think that everyone should seek support if that's something that they want. Because you, you deserve to be supported through things. Like we're not meant to do life alone. You literally were created on this planet because two people work together to make you. So what makes you think that now that you're here, you're meant to do things alone? Mm. Like creation happens through collaboration. So why would anything else not be that way? In many religious spheres, manifestation is sort of like an off topic thing, right? Because it in a way is like people, individuals are playing God. Right. Like I create this when really like a lot most religious believe you like if you believe in Jesus, like Jesus is the one that helps you and guides you through this. Like mm-hmm. God has all power. How does an, an individual's ability or desire to do manifestation work work in tandem with their relationship with their own higher power? And can the two exist? Can they coexist? Um, yeah, actually, like when I'm manifesting, it's literally not just me. It's actually co-creation. Yeah. So. It's the same. So there's a difference, right? So let's break that down. Like, it's not just, I can make it happen by myself. Yeah, no. Like I said at the beginning, like my spirit team, Mm -hmm. my spirit guys and my spirit team and like God, source, universe, higher power, whatever you want to call it, however you want to see it, whatever you feel connected to. Like, I'm not doing this alone. I have an entire spirit team and the universe, God, higher power that I am in co-creation with. And so it's not me. I don't have to do this all by myself. Like that's too heavy. 
that's too hard. Yeah. You know, like I, everyone has an entire team that is literally their job is to help you and to support you and to help co-create with you. And this is just like, like rely on them, you know? So they can coexist. 1000%. I think everybody just has like different perceptions. Like my thing with religious, why I don't connect to it is because I feel like, um, people may be like, think it has to be all God, mm -hmm. you know? And then some people think like, it's all me, the human. Right. And I'm like, it's a co-creation. Yeah. Like you guys do it together. I have these desires in my heart mm -hmm. that God placed in there. Yeah. And like between him and I, we help bring them to life. Um, how has dating been for you since you've been on this, like on this vibe? I have not. <laughs> um, you know why? Only Tell because, me. well, no, that's, that's a lie. I have, we don't even know what the lie it was. What was the lie <laughs> that I haven't dated? No. Oh, okay. I, I, I've dated obviously since I've been on like a spiritual journey, but since pandemic, uh -huh. I have not dated only because I'm like strictly dating myself. I love that. And like, so committed to like my personal growth and like my spirituality and like my connection to self and source that like I don't have time or space right now for that not to say that I don't want it like if yeah. it shows up by all means but I, I really want to like get myself to like a super solid amazing place by myself before I like bring someone in on the journey all right, Mama, I'm so grateful that we got to record together. You've been on my list of people to record. And I'm so happy we got to do it here in Magical Zion. I feel like it like was meant to be. Me too. This is my first time um, doing a podcast like live, like next to another next human. Next to another person. Me too. It's like, I was slightly a little nervous. Like, I'm like right here with you. I got to stare into no, your eyeballs. Like for the record, like in order for us to both <laughs> be on the screen, we are literally like 12 inches, like one foot apart from one another. Luckily, we're very close. Not I only, didn't brush my teeth. Not only in distance, coffee, though. but... We're spirit sisters, so light beam spirit sisters. Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo, over and out. Thank you so much for listening to the know. If you loved this episode, go ahead and share it with a friend. Words are so powerful, and someone may need to hear what we covered today. And if you really loved this episode, please take a moment to rate the show and leave a review. Your comments are so important and valued, and they give other listeners insight on what to expect on The Know. You can connect with me personally via Instagram at Nikki Sap Spo and The Know with Nikki Spo. My hope for you today is that you are fearless in looking inward so that you can be your highest, most authentic self and go after the life of your dreams.